We're here in Duart Castle talking to Sir Lachlan MacLean, who is the 28th Clan Chief of the Clan MacLean. And Sir Lachlan is about to announce some interesting events that Castle Duart is about to start running. Can you tell us something about them? Yes, well, we've got a variety of, um, of events. Some are new, completely new. Um, one of those is the Cayleys that we're running. We have um, have done Cayleys here, sort of charity Cayleys, but this year we're going to have some Cayleys down in the tea room. And we've got sort of two that are adult Cayleys, and then we've got two that are children's Cayleys, and geared more towards Cayley dancing and things. So we hope that it'll be something that the family can come, come and enjoy. So that's a, that is a new in, in, innovation. The other thing that's new is we've got children's tours. Um, and I've had four children, and I've now got eight grandchildren. And I know that taking them around somewhere like this, that um, you know, there are lots of little bits that are of interest to them that maybe get missed when they're going around. So I hope that that will be something that children will enjoy, because, you know, castles do have dungeons and cannonballs and blood and all sorts of gory things so I hope that the children will enjoy that and we're going to do that once a week throughout summer holidays. And have you chosen the places that the children's tour will go to? Sorry? Have you chosen the places that the children's <laughs> tour will go to? Well yes, I mean we know that, that it'll be going around the castle but what, what we're going to do is sort of concentrate on certain bits so they won't stand in the sea room and talk about the view, they may miss the sea room and go in and then there'll be a bit on cannonballs and how they kill people and the effect that the wood had when the cannonball hit the wooden ship and the splinters which often yes. killed people rather than actually the cannonball. That's very, very appealing to a young imagination. Well, I hope so. I, I, mean, I just hope that they, um, they, they don't... We, we get it right and we, it's not sort of too frightening because even now some children go through the dungeons and say, oh, those dungeons are, you know, <laughs> do you ever put anyone in them? And, uh, <laughs> well, not before today. <laughs> not, before, not before today, absolutely. <laughs> um, you, you take tours of the castle yourself. You take small invited tours mm. where people can have a chance to hear you talk about your place. Mm. How long have you been doing that? Well, I did it about five or six years ago. I did two or three and then I rather um, stopped it because uh, it was taking an awful lot of time and it, it wasn't, I hadn't marketed it terribly well. But what we've done this year is we've got some set ones and we had some we did last year as well and they were very popular. And we start when the castle closes and we, I just take a small group round the castle. And again, it's sort of telling things that I used to do as a boy, um, which sometimes seems they find quite interesting. <laughs> but you know, it, it, it's much more of an intimate tour. And then we end up all um, in, in our drawing room having a chat about it and um, having a drink together. That sounds really enjoyable. Well, I mean, I think it is. I mean, the, the people last last year all very the feedback was very positive, um, and. Uh, I think my children say sometimes I bore people, but I keep saying as we're going around, am I boring you? And they say, no, no. So I think I've got it reasonably right. <laughs> um, what interests me is that this castle was lost to your family twice mm. in history to the Clan Campbell. Yes. Are there reverberations from that still in your family? Um, not, not really. I, I think... Um, there is certainly, I, I think it would be fair to say, among some Maclean's a feeling of um, anger at the Campbells that um, they did do so much or remove the land from so many people in the west, west of Scotland. Um, I don't think there's, there's no particular hate at all now, but there's not a great deal of love, I think, probably, would be the worst way of putting it. No, I mean, it's interesting because these things do reverberate through time. Mm. And mm. I think the way that they leave a mark is interesting. Some of your ancestors are pretty legendary. Um, tell me about Hector Moore. Well, Hector Moore was probably one of one of the most famous chiefs, and he was he was chief when it was right at the sort of pinnacle of of, of, of our sort of um, ascendancy. Uh, and he was he was very ruthless and, and bloodthirsty. I mean, he was the man who borrowed a hundred Spanish soldiers off the galleon in Tobermory. And uh, the, the 
prisons in the dungeons here are officers from the galleon who were taken as hostage. And some Maclean's went on to the galleon and to Overmore as hostages as well. And Loch Lamour took off then with his hundred men and put a uh, rum egg and mucked the sword. And um, we know that because Clan Ranald, whose islands they were, wrote to Edinburgh saying, these strange men with muskets and funny hats are here. <laughs> um, so at one extreme, he did that. Then, of course, the galleon was blown up in, in Tobermory. Um, he did that. On, on the other hand, um, the rumour goes that he was quite political um, and was negotiating with Queen Elizabeth at that stage in England um, about the Irish situation and things like that. But the great thing that seemed to come out of it, he didn't get paid anything for it. So if he was doing any of that, he wasn't very worthwhile. <laughs> Not very successful. <laughs> very successful as a spy. <laughs> um, I guess each clan chief uh, leaves Stuart a little bit different from the way he found it in some way. Mm. What would you see as your contribution to Stuart? Well, I think that's a hard one because you've you got to remember that, that, that since it was restored in 1910, there have only been three chiefs. There was Elsa Fitzroy who restored it to live to be 101. And then my father, who was chief for 50-odd years. And in 1992, when we had our centenary gathering, there had only been three chiefs. And I said, you know, the other two were, were, were big chiefs, and I'd only been chief for two years, so I was a little chief. <laughs> and... Um, I think, you know, my, my father, after the war, did, did a lot here. And I think what I've tried to do is to put it into better shape than it was. It was getting very um, um, damp and we were having problems with leaking walls and things. And um, if, if I'm, a, I'm probably a builder in that sense, in that I've tried to stabilise it and make it more of a, um, a live building. Um, and at the same time, the bit that, that the public don't come round, where my family are all here, which, which is um, on the other side, make it a home for them. And they all want to come here the whole time. So I think I've been successful in that. But it's balancing the two. It has to be open to the public, otherwise I wouldn't be able to afford to, to keep the roof on it. But on the other hand, I want my family to enjoy it as a home, just like I did when I was a boy. I think it does feel like a living building mm. as someone who's never been here before. Mm. And in a way, that, that, that's the sort of evidence that you're, you've got the right recipe. Well, it's good because when people say, oh, you've got a lovely museum, yes. I do feel a bit disappointed, actually, yes. because it, they've missed it. They've yes. missed what we're, trying, what we're trying to do, really. Yes. It doesn't feel like a museum at all. No. Well, I don't think it does. You don't think it does, so that's OK. <laughs> we agreed. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>